it's usually around September that these types of videos will start making their way to your subscription or your For You feed because it's often around the Italian Grand Prix that we start to see drivers not having contracts renewed or drivers kicked to the curb and people started to move their way up from Formula 2 into Formula 1. That's if, you know, they actually get to be in Formula 1 with the way that things are. But already we had the news that Lewis Hamilton was going to move away from Mercedes, for whom he's been the equivalent of a one-club man in football, given that he's been in a Mercedes-powered car for his entire F1 career, and him moving to a team powered by anything but a Mercedes seems weird. It would be like Tom Brady leaving the Patriots, Lionel Messi leaving Barcelona, or Gretzky moving to Los Angeles. But all those things happened and they were weird. Also, this is pretty much going to be a stick me on in the background type of video with less talking head and more pictures and commentary. The abrupt change in weather has set my asthma off and it's just easier for me to make a video this way. On top of this, we had the even more shocking news that Adrian Newey was going to leave Red Bull after 20 years, six constructors championships and seven drivers championships. The most successful designer in F1 history and probably the most decorated man in any form of motorsport this side of Roger Penske abruptly left his position at Red Bull, thought to be in part due to the carnage and perceived power struggle happening over at Milton Keynes, on top of the alleged abuse of position committed by the team's principal, Christian Horner. And at the time of writing, the 19th of July 2024, it's still a bit up in the air as to what Nui is going to do. Jeremy Clarkson went on a wind-up at the British Grand Prix saying that Nui was house-hunting in Oxfordshire rather than Italy, while it could be possible that Nui just retires to his massive boat in the Med. Since Nui announced his departure from Red Bull, it's been pretty quiet on that front, and I expected there to be rampant speculation and constant updates on this, given how long and successful his CV is, and how high in demand he would be. Because, let's be honest, Nui is the kid that everybody wanted to pick first for football on the playground. If you have Nui, chances are you're going to be successful. But now the news has come out that Kevin Magnussen is set to be out at Haas, and for 2025 there will be a free seat up for grabs. But who even wants that seat? Because things with Haas seem to be a little all over the place at the minute. Towards the end of May this year, Stuart Haas Racing, a joint venture between Gene Haas and Tony Stewart, announced that it would be closing its doors at the end of the 2024 NASCAR season. In doing so, six drivers will be out of seats and hundreds of team members will be looking for new jobs. The team joined NASCAR in 2002, with Gene using the sport as a means to promote Haas Automation, a company that made its fortune making CNC machines that will make stuff where precision is needed. Did you know that the Prime Minister's dad was a toolmaker? In 2008, Haas lured Tony Stewart away from Joe Gibbs Racing and this allowed Tony to take on half the team, where it would now be named Stewart Haas Racing. To show intent in building the team up from mid-pack obscurity up towards the front, Stuart Haas signed Ryan Newman from Penske, and it all paid off as three years later in 2011, Stuart won the championship, with the team managing to sign Danica Patrick from IndyCar for 2013, where she generated headlines and publicity through being the only female driver on the grid. Fast forward another 11 years and things are incredibly different. Stewart retired from NASCAR in 2016 and has over the last 8 years started to become less and less interested in the category. Kevin Harvick retired at the end of last year and with his departure meant the departure of the Anheuser-Busch backing. On top of this, Eric Almirola left at the same time, taking Smithfield Foods with him. I watched NASCAR's Drive to Survive show, but that was for the 2023 playoffs more than anything, and was also pretty much Denny Hamlin just going, Why can't I win a title? So then, back to Formula 1, because things aren't exactly great over on this side of the Atlantic for Haas here either. They finished bottom of the standings last season, despite finishing 8th in 2022, which was a considerable improvement over the utterly useless 2021 season that they had. Gunther Steiner left Haas in January to be replaced by Ayao Kamatsu, I hope I've got that pronunciation correct, who was the trackside engineering director, with the whole thing being the desire to get things running again so they could climb back up the order in the constructors. This being after Steiner had been quite vocal about how the team was being run from the States, and how a lot of people were saying why Haas is still around, given that Gene doesn't seem to want to put money in his own pocket to help the team out, and that the team would be better off being sold to Andretti instead. But at the minute, this restructuring at the top seems to be working. In the last couple of races, Haas seems to be cooking with two sixth place finishes, and the cars seem to be knocking on the door of points more often than not when they don't score points. There are a couple of exceptions, such as Bahrain where one of them was 16th, China was another 16th for one of the cars, 19th in Miami, and 17th in Spain. But they are just about getting points at any other opportunity. 
This bit does get a little bit confusing because what I'm known for is the historical stuff. So when I go back through the results into the 80s, 90s and 2000s, it has the car numbers so you know which car got what result or which result. Yeah, I'm having one of those days. Now, for whatever reason, it's the best result listed first on the modern point standings. So Mercedes has its two wins at Austria and Silverstone, but after all of those years of looking at the older results, my brain defaults to Hamilton having those wins, even though Russell got one of them. So Haas looks like they're having a moment of being on the up, although it'll have to be a wait and see on how that form translates into the second half of the season. Where the problem now arises is at the end of the year, they'll be losing both drivers. Hulkenberg is off to Sauber as it transitions towards Audi, and now Magnussen is going to be gone. This now means that there's six seats available for 2025 as not everybody is locked in yet. There's a free seat at Williams, a free seat at Sauber, one at Haas now, one at RB, one at Mercedes, and one at Alpine. Seven, if this whole thing about Max leaving Red Bull at the end of the year actually happens, you know, if you want to create some sort of Max is holding the rest of the driver market hostage thing here. To replace one of the drivers, Oli Behrman has been signed thanks to his connections at Ferrari. Ferrari, since Haas came into F1 in 2016, has had a close relationship with the team, with Ferrari putting Mick Schumacher into one of those seats already, and Haas was where Charles Leclerc did his first F1 test in 2016. Haas effectively does the bare minimum in designing its cars as a result, buying everything it can from Ferrari instead of designing their own parts. But Magnussen is upbeat about the whole situation. He told Autosport that while F1 is the pinnacle, there are still other forms of racing out there for him that he considers fun. While he wants to stay in Formula 1 and there are opportunities still available, albeit not quite the six I've already mentioned, more like two or three, going into another category isn't going to be the end of the world for him. When he was called back up by the team in 2022, he was getting set to race for Peugeot on the manufacturer's return to endurance racing in the hypercar category. He then returned to Formula 1 and scored points at the first race like he'd never been away. He's one of those drivers that seems to have a modicum of talent but lets other bits and pieces bring him down. The guy is supposed to be on the edge of getting a ban but the FIA seems wary about doing so, even if some of his on-track antics have been, come on, ban me, go on, do it, I dare ya. But he also said that if he's going to be in Formula 1 it's going to be driving. Being an advisor with Haas isn't going to sit well with him, but like I said he would be a good fit elsewhere, particularly with sports cars. His dad, Jan, had a brief F1 career through 1997 and 1998, with a guest appearance at the 1995 Pacific Grand Prix for McLaren, but it didn't pan out well, being dropped by Stewart midway through 1998. After which, he went to sports cars and with Corvette had success at Le Mans, winning GTS and GT1 classes and also has a couple more podiums to his name there too. In 2021, Jan and Kevin shared an LMP2 where they finished 17th in class. Jan has also got a class win in 2015 at Daytona in IMSA in a C7R and has GTLM class wins in 2017 and 2018, again with Corvette. So there's that for Kevin too. Having Jan as a coach in the transition from open wheels to sports cars would come as a big help. But there's also IndyCar, where several other F1 rejects have gone in recent years, particularly Marcus Ericsson, who won the Indy 500 in 2022, and Roman Grosjean, who also drove for Haas with Kevin before they were both knocked aside for Nikita Mazepin and Mick Schumacher in 2021. But the question remains as to what Haas will do. They announced two weeks ago that one of the seats would be filled with Oli Behrman, who did a one-off appearance for Ferrari earlier this year and is currently 13th in the F2 standings, while at the same time Kimi Antonelli is being tipped to have the open slot at Williams with other drivers room to be in for that seat as well. The driver that's rumoured to be in strong contention for the other Haas seat is Esteban Ocon, who was dropped by Alpine following the Monaco Grand Prix. But whoever does fill the second seat, it's the end of a long-running association with one particular team. As the race pointed out, Magnussen will have racked up an impressive 147 races with Haas at the end of the season. That is, assuming every race goes ahead as planned and he starts them, which will put him 7th on the all-time list of drivers with the longest spells at one particular team. The other six? Well, in order from 6th to 1st, it's Alonso at Renault slash Alpine, Coulthard at McLaren, Raikkonen at Ferrari, Verstappen at Red Bull, Schumacher at Ferrari, and no surprises as to who is number one. Hamilton at Mercedes, a tally that will come to an end at the end of this year. But what the race also pointed out is something that does explain why they might not be keeping Magnussen around beyond this year. 
Hulkenberg has been giving him a showing this season, and Hulkenberg himself will be departing the team to go to Sauber. This all being despite Komatsu calling him a bedrock of the team, and being the only Haas driver to start a race from the front row of the grid. But despite those two accolades and helping the team to fifth in the 2018 season, his ups have been cancelled out with too many downs to be considered the person to lead the team in 2025. He's been one of those drivers that needs everything to be right for him to shine, and when they're not, things tend to go the opposite way, much like a Jean Alesi or a Juan Pablo Montoya. But in terms of overall aggression, Magnussen is closer to a Montoya than he is to an Alesi. Hulkenberg has 22 points this year versus Kevin's 5, and despite taking part in many, many, many more races this season, Kevin is still behind Behrman in the standings, while Hulkenberg is more than comfortably above. Hulkenberg's top 10 finishes this season is at 5, Magnussen at just 2, and Hulkenberg will likely overtake Stroll who is just a point ahead of him and then enter the top 10 for the driver standings. However, Magnussen did get a podium on his debut in Australia in 2014. Sure, helped out by Ricardo's disqualification, but it seems that since he hasn't really lived up to that. Okay, his cars haven't been great, but his on-track stuff probably hasn't helped him out either. But at the same time, that's probably what makes him what he is. He's a solid midfield driver that needs everything to fit right to get a wonder result, but at the same time, his personality is a welcome difference from the cookie-cutter corporate drivers you see a lot of on the grid today. He's not afraid to say what he thinks, and that divides people. His suck my balls comment to Hulkenberg will make every highlight reel for eternity, and when called upon to hold people up so Hulk can get further up the road, he does it. Has he pushed it a bit too far while doing that? Probably. Has it worked? Yeah. But it's also nice to see his enthusiasm for going outside Formula 1 and giving something else a crack. Like someone said in one of the comment sections, he's going to be 32 when he leaves the sport, so he's got plenty of time ahead for him to do what he clearly loves doing. Racing. Jan is still racing at 51, and Kevin will have at least another 10 years if he lands a solid drive. Danes seem to have a knack for endurance racing, it seems. Another comment here says, K-Mag is one of the more interesting drivers on the grid. Fact is, he earned the seat and his revival to the team in 2022 really changed the fortunes of the team, scoring important points and also resetting the team's expectations of what their performance benchmark should be. Yes, his on-track shenanigans go over the line, but he did it to help the team and Nico score points. He deserved his F1 shot. Maybe he wasn't the best F1 driver, but was a solid midfield driver and fairly quick when everything suited him, as his debut at McLaren proved. Far worse F1 drivers have had much better chances than K-Mag. And that person is right. A lot worse have had better chances. Magnussen was called back in 2022 for a reason. He knew the team, he knew the setup, and came back and put it straight into the points. Problem was, his inconsistency showed, and that was part of the reason Hulk was brought back in. And as they say, your teammate is your first opponent, and Kevin's not been matching him. And while Haas looks like they've taken all of that into account with him not being renewed for 2025, if they do sign Ocon, then that understanding flies out the window. At that point, you might as well have kept Magnussen. Unless Haas blindsides everybody and signs Bottas instead, because he's not tied down for anywhere next year. So this is where the floor now gets opened up to you, the listeners, viewers, background noise putter on us. Has Haas had a catastrophe by dumping Magnussen, or are they right to try and find somebody more consistent to help with the development and help coach Behrman? Or are they right to get rid of him because of his inconsistency and that's not fitting with the vision that Haas currently has? Let me know down in the designated comment submission zone and get a discussion going. Because, after all, that's what these videos are for. So then, some bits and pieces surrounding the whole Kevin Magnussen being dropped from Haas for 2025 news. If this has given you some food for thought and you think I've made some good points, then do like the video so I know a good job was done. And for more stuff like this, get subscribed and also get that bell on so you never miss out on anything else I do around here. Massive thanks as ever to the fine bunch of lads at Patreon that continue to support the channel at a more personal level, and if you want to help keep things running around here, then there is a link to Patreon in the description, along with links to Discord, socials, and other bits and bobs that you might want or need to know. There's also super thanks for one and done donations, and there's also memberships if you want a Patreon alternative, because I know some people want to help out, but they're not too keen on Patreon. But either way, until next time, I've been Aidan Maud, have a great day wherever you live in the world, and I'll see you all again soon for another video. Goodbye.